After Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 being a moderate success, there was supposed to be a sequel entitled Halloween 3D to come out in 2012. Rob Zombie stated that he didn't want to do a third film, so the Weinstein Company contacted Steve Miner, who did the Friday the 13th 3D as well as Halloween H2O, to do the film, but he declined. Patrick Lucier was then signed on to direct and co-write along with Todd Farmer as they did My Bloody Valentine 3D. Lucier and Farmer stated that they would be filming soon to scout Taylor Compton, but she declined to appear, saying she would only sign on if the film was good enough. In late 2009, Farmer turned in a first draft of a script, but production had to be shut down because the Weinsteins ran out of money. Plus, they didn't want to rush things and had Lucier and Farmer finish Drive Angry, then do Halloween 3D. They then dropped out to do the supposed involvement with a Hellraiser remake that never saw the light of day. Due to the fact that no progress had been made on the film, it was then cancelled. In 2015, there was then new plans to make another Halloween film titled Halloween Returns, not connected to the zombie films. It was described as a recalibration of the Halloween franchise, and would have reintroduced Myers in a contemporary setting after his initial rampage in Halloween and Halloween 2. From the plot that was revealed, it would have featured a new generation of victims pitted against Myers. The main protagonist would have been a child of one of his victims, now 18 years old, and a child of a cop who was obsessed with the Myers case. However, due to the fact that Dimension Films lost the rights, the film was canned. The writers were supposed to be Patrick Melton and Marcus Dunstan, the latter of which would be directing. Then in 2016, it was announced that David Gordon Green and Danny McBride would helm a brand new Halloween film, approved by John Carpenter, who would also be doing the music with his son Cody and Daniel Davies. This is the film we'll be talking about for the last day of Monster Madness. So there have been a lot of Halloween films. In the original series, there were eight films, as well as a remake and its sequel, as I just stated. I've only seen the first four. Due to the hatred of Five, Curse, and Resurrection, I don't bother with those. Apparently H2O is really good, but I view that as a Halloween film for the screen crowd, so I don't bother with it either. Plus the remake movie sucks, so whatever. When I heard that this film was coming out, I was cautiously optimistic. With Green and McBride at the helm, I wasn't sure where to go. Even with Carpenter giving his blessing, I wasn't too sure about it. Older and wiser director give blessings to shitty movies all the time so this movie could be similar. However, I was absolutely and 100% proven wrong. As much as I like 3 and 4, this is easily the best Halloween sequel we've gotten. Which technically isn't saying much, but still, it was genuinely very good. Jamie Lee Curtis is an absolute fucking powerhouse in this movie. Easily the best actor or actress in the whole movie. The rest of the cast isn't incredibly memorable, but Judy Greer and Andy Matichak do in fact do a good job in their roles. I hope that their roles are expanded upon properly in the sequels. The effects were absolutely fucking amazing. They are some of the best practicals in recent memory. They are a bit distracting at times, but still fantastic. Another thing that was really great about it was that Michael was back to being stealthy again. In the Rob Zombie movies, he's pretty much just a walking human shredder too extreme and was more silly than frightening. Here he's brutal but he's still stealthy like a ninja. That's what makes Meyer so scary and another thing that makes him so scary is his unpredictability which was lost in the sequels. The whole point of Myers is that we don't know who he's gonna let live and who's gonna die. Again, what makes him scary? It's great. The music by the Carpenters and Davies is pure fucking ecstasy. It's amazing, because it updates the score really well without sacrificing what made it so amazing in the first place. The original will always be the best, but this is a fantastic update. As well as the fact that this is much scarier than all the sequels. It still had its fair share of jump scares and stuff like that. There were still really long shots of following Michael, and it was just creepy as hell, and the tension was absolutely fantastic. If I had any qualms with the film, it was that the editing was kind of weirdly rushed at points. The way it was cut was just very jarring. Not throughout the whole film, but in the first act, they had that a bunch. 
While Danny McBride and David Gordon Green are more famous for comedy, the comedy in this film just didn't work at points. There were weird lines of dialogue as well as this little black kid who feels like he's in the wrong movie. He's funny, but it just took me out of the film. I also like the various references in the movie to all the other movies, like Laurie waiting across the street like Michael in the first movie, or Allison's Halloween costume becoming a mirror of what Laurie wore in the original film, or Laurie falling off the balcony in the climax. They were all nice to see, despite being obvious and kind of shoehorned in there, but as a, as a huge Halloween fan, I didn't care. <laughs> Overall, though, this was an amazing sequel. Despite some of my issues with it, I can't sing my praises enough. So, that does it for Sequel and Remake-a-thon. This was certainly a fun, albeit kind of annoying theme. I enjoyed watching a bunch of new movies, some I had been meaning to see for a while, while others I had to slog through. Despite this, I hope everyone had fun this month. I already have something in mind for next year. Happy Halloween, everyone.